Landowners along the Oregon LNG pipeline have been experiencing a lot of frustration and neglect and abuse from the Oregon LNG employees. Um, landowners have experienced trespassing and a lot of kind of pushing around and threats of eminent domain and things like that by, by the company. And so today we made so many complaints about that that FERC responded in a completely unique way in a way that they've never done before and they uh, brought a FERC judge here to take public testimony from people who have experienced this so that they can analyze and look at the way that Oregon LNG has been abusing landowners here in Oregon. So today people are here to support those landowners and also just in general say that we don't want LNG, we don't want pipelines um, on our public lands or our private lands. My name is Kay Peterson. I live on a small 10 acre farm in Woodburn and I was here today not just for the protest but I was up in uh, uh, the city hall chamber testifying in front of a hearings judge that was sent by FERC. Uh, about a lot of the um, problems that landowners have had with Oregon LNG, about them illegally accessing their land, uh, being lied to, uh, lack of information, how the hearings were conducted, a whole host of things. And I had submitted testimony uh, previously and then I was asked if I wanted to testify and under oath and have that go into the public record, which I did do about the tactics of Peter Hansen and Ori Oregon LNG in not giving uh, me adequate notice about meetings, not adequate information, and then his bullying tactics at the hearings in Woodburn. So um, it is on, will be on a public record uh, on the FERC website, and I think right now Peter Hansen and his little group are having their chance to testify right now uh, about what we said, but uh, essentially there's been hearings here, there was a, a town hall hearing in Astoria and then one in um, Forest Grove and basically about people who have complained about Oregon LNG and FERC, but the hearings judge, there's a firewall between her and what the uh, rest of FERC has done or is doing. So it's, it's, it's a very unbiased um, you know, hearing that she's had. But it's not just the only hearing, we're testifying under oath. And that's what I did this morning. And of course, knew about the protest afterwards. So I am an affected landowner. It used to be Oregon LNG, but now it's Palomar that would go through our land. Did it seem like the judge, was the judge asking questions? Yes, she was asking questions um, because we are not attorneys and this is a little bit of a different kind of uh, procedure, it's not as if we can be cross-examined by somebody else. So, um, but we, again, we're under oath and she wanted factual information. And a bunch of the stuff that I had brought was submitted into the record about the kinds of information I received from um, the pipeline company when they first notified me that they were going to put a pipeline across my land. Again, very little information and they immediately wanted me to sign documents that would grant them access to my property, uh, which I refused to do at the time and I still refuse to do. She was very even-handed, very helpful. Um, her questions were to help us give good, complete answers for the record. So she was here to gather as much information about what has been going on, um, on on the part of either some other members of FERC or Oregon LNG. Just remember, folks, if you're watching this, this is a bunch of rich individual investors who are wanting to do this. This is not driven by demand. FERC uh, approves everything. You don't have to demonstrate a need for natural gas for these pipelines to come through. And this was not any public utility starting this process. These are private investors. And this is what a lot of people don't realize. All of the LNG proposals and related pipelines are backed by massive energy corporations, New York hedge funds. Um, the, the, the companies that are backing this have a, a lot of money to invest in the process of taking people's land from them and sort of, in our opinion, you know, cramming these projects down our throats when 
it's been proven time and time again that liquefied natural gas is not a needed energy source in Oregon. The Oregon Department of Energy has said that. The Citizens Utility Board has said that LNG is a bad investment that will rate uh, that will increase um, uh, energy rates for gas customers and electricity users in the state. This is all around a really bad deal. Part of the reason that we're here today is. You know, we're here to stand in solidarity with the landowners in rural Oregon who are impacted, but we're also here to represent ourselves who are concerned about the loss of the use of our public lands, the, the concern about closing down the Columbia River for the sake of highly um, dangerous LNG tanker traffic that would stop commercial traffic on the Columbia River. We're concerned about the 47 mile long clear cut that would have to happen on Mount Hood National Forest for the sake of the Palomar pipeline which is backed by Northwest Natural. And we're really just here to s today, it, it, the reason that we're, we're here today is because it's Earth Day and we want to celebrate our planet by stopping devastating fossil fuel projects that include clear cuts and water crossings and further dependence on high carbon fossil fuels. But in addition to that, what's happening right now is that the Oregon LNG and Pipeline Company are being investigated by the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission for complaints of misconduct, abuse and coercion by landowners affected by the pipeline. At the same time, the state of Oregon is considering extending a lease for public land to the Oregon LNG company for another 60 years to build a, a you know a, a energy infrastructure an industrial complex on land that is owned by the Oregon public for for a ridiculously low price of thirty eight thousand four hundred dollars a year which is pennies on the dollar of what a deep water industrial port is really worth that money should be that 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 lease needs to be renegotiated and denied really you know because it's not in the best interest of the Oregon public to investing in liquefied natural gas in our state and money that's paid on public lands goes into our common school fund so the very least we're asking is that the state of Oregon renegotiate that lease for a, a, a lease value that is rel, uh, realistic for the value of the land so that our common school fund is no longer you know diminished but ultimately we just we oppose the development of foreign fossil fuels in our in our you know in our state we're concerned about the environmental and economic impacts and the social injustices that are happening both here to the landowners that are threatened by eminent domain for this needless project and abroad where communities in areas where liquefied natural gas is extracted and produced are being displaced from their communities are having their fisheries damaged by that development um, so we're you know we're here to say no no LNG. LNG. we all agree no no we all agree. No LNG. 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 I'm a boater, and these things come through with you know armed gunships, and they exclude you from the river and there's not enough room in the river to get outside the exclusion zones without ending up on the sandbanks. So, you know, if you're out there and you can't get out of the exclusion zone, then you've got to go into a, a port and wait while these things go around. So if you're out there fishing or something, you've got to cut bait and go inside, or if you're out there sailing, you've got to drop sails and, you know, quit what you're doing and go in and get out of the river while these things come through. And that's what really upsets me about them. You say all activities has to stop. Yes, yes, all anything you're doing out in the river, if you're sailing or fishing or commercial fishing, when these things come through, you got to get outside the exclusion zone. And if you can't, and in most places in the river you can't because the river's too shallow. The thing that disturbs me most is I'm afraid that people really don't understand the uh, long-term ramifications of uh, what is going to be happening uh, with this. For instance, they're coming in, they're taking people's uh, pro uh, land, they're, they're claiming it as an easement, but they're not going to maintain the easement. The people in the state of Oregon have to maintain the easement. They're also going to be building this LNG pipeline um, 
or or the um, uh, the the polymer pipeline through the national forests again with the Oregonians having to maintain the easements and getting no real benefits because the the um, product that, that's going through there the natural gas is going to be going to somewhere else and we're all afraid that they might turn it around and export it like out of Astoria and, and uh, it's a very dangerous substance and and uh, the state of Oregon really does not benefit from this it's the corporations that are benefiting from it uh, my name is uh, Sam Sweeney and we farm in the Dayton area and my wife Nancy and I for a multi-generational farm we hope our grandson will farm be able to farm and uh, He's just about at the age where he's, you know, starting to think about things like that. We raise a wide variety of crops in the Dayton area, and the two pipelines will go through somewhere approximately around a mile and a half to two miles on our farm properties. And we're really concerned about that because the permanent easement corridor will be prevented from planting higher value crops such as marion berries, which we grow quite a few of. Also, we can't plant filberts because it's a deep-rooted crop. Blueberries, again, because it uh, requires post and wire. Uh, they don't want to see those crops grown there. And uh, so it's, it's, just a, it's just not a good thing for farmers to have a pipeline going through the middle of the farm. Plus, you've always got to worry about the danger of it. It's a large pipe. They only want to put it three to five foot underneath the ground, and we think it should go much deeper. Uh, but anyway, there's always a risk of hitting it with uh, deep tillage equipment. And so it's just something we just really would hope that it would never happen. And Oregon does not need LNG. It's been uh, a study that was released in May of 2008 that verified that Oregon um, would not benefit at all from LNG. They can get the gas much more reasonable with a lot lesser uh, environmental impact from the, from the middle part of the United States. And they found more supplies even since 2008. And so there's plenty of gas, and so it's just not a good thing. We, we here in Oregon definitely don't need it. So from what you're saying, it isn't going to be just a narrow corridor through your land and then they cover it up. They're dictating what you can do with your land. Exactly, and, and once they have that right, they could always come back in and say, you know, we really need a, we really need a pumping station here to increase the pressure, and so that's something that once they uh, they're here, they could always exercise that power of eminent domain. Here's the other interesting part about it: it's a private for profit company that's been granted the rights of eminent domain. Once they get the application and the permit, they're granted the right of eminent domain, which we totally disagree with. The power of eminent domain should only be used for the, for the good of the public. And it's only through the public need that that should be exercised. But this is going to be granted to a, for a, a profit company, a private company. We just think that's totally wrong. It's against private property rights. And uh, so it's just not needed, natural LNG, and so we're just totally against it. This is a large line, I mean, three foot in diameter. And it's 800 to 1400 pounds per square inch. It's going to supply gas to a wide area. They have to have quick access. They have to be able to monitor it quickly and easily. They have to be able to fly over it and look and just see how it's, you know if there's any breaks or anything. And so just for that uh, right alone, to, or the ability to do that, they have to have it cleared to where they can see it. And plus, they have to get in, be able to get in and fix any problems that you know would occur. And it probably won't happen, but 30 years from now, pipes rust in Oregon. And when that happens, then there'll probably be more repairs needed and they'll probably be needing to get on our land more and more. So it's just, it's just a presence that we don't want on our land at all. Yeah, well the reason that we're that Bark is here is that we want to not only support the landowners who are getting um, time to speak and tell their story about the way that these LNG companies have been treating them, um, but we also want to raise the issue that everybody's impacted by this. Um, the pipelines that they're proposing, both Oregon LNG and Palomar, are going over significant portions of public land, which is land that we all own and we all should be able to be a part of decision making. Um, the 
BARC has been following Mount Hood National Forest, the impacts of Mount Hood National Forest. Oregon LNG crosses um, several state forests as well as some county and municipal land. And so we want to make sure that people understand that this is not just um, the landowners who have had their lives basically put on hold for several years waiting in anticipation about whether a pipeline is going to be driven through their land. But it's also, it's all of us that need to start um, taking responsibility for these proposals and, and stopping them. Uh, what happened inside the building was, you know, kind of a dance by Oregon LNG to pretend that they've been doing the right thing and trying to treat people fairly. Uh, what we're doing outside the building is calling on the state of Oregon to put a stop to this mess. Uh, now is the time for the state of Oregon to simply cancel its lease with the Oregon LNG project. The state of Oregon has leased its land uh, near Warrington uh, to the company for the bargain basement rate of $38,000 a year. This is 92 acres of waterfront property to an LNG company for $38,000 a year. It's nothing. It's probably about a million dollars too low, to be honest. And that's money that comes right out of the common school fund. Um, so already this project has cost the taxpayers of Oregon and our schools $5 million. Uh, that is an important factor that the state of Oregon really needs to look at uh, when they're evaluating this lease. So right now, uh, we're asking the state of Oregon to cancel its lease with the Oregon LNG project. That puts all those farmers and foresters um, out of their difficulty you know, in terms of this project. And, and it's just plainly the right thing for the people of Oregon and the taxpayers of Oregon. Uh, so if the Oregon LNG terminal loses its lease, then there would be no pipeline through all these farms and forests. It's very important uh, to us that, at the very least, the state make this company apply under a fair process under a public process. This is a lease deal that was signed literally on a Friday evening with 24 hours notice. No one knew anything about this project when they signed this lease. So it was a raw deal for the people of Oregon and we're calling on the state to do the right thing and to put an end to this project. One of the big factors that we're uh, also considering about why Oregon LNG's project is a terrible project is the places where this stuff comes from. By importing LNG, we're buying into a market that uh, explores pristine rainforests across the world, uh, that digs up pristine salmon grounds, uh, just to send liquid gas all the way across the ocean to a state that doesn't want it or need it. So what we're looking at is, is environmental racism as a major problem with this project. Um, it's easy to outsource the impacts of overconsumption in the United States of energy to places like Peru and uh, the east coast of Russia, where people have much less power um, to stop the projects. And that's what's happening all over the world. So when we hear about abuses of landowners and environmental damage here in Oregon, it's really just a small microcosm of the entire supply chain. So looking all the way upstream, uh, LNG looks even worse than it does here out in front of City Hall in Portland um, and across farms all, all across Oregon. Uh, so again, this is an energy source that we don't think is clean, uh, we don't think is equitable, and we're calling on the state of Oregon to do the right thing and, and not to buy into this stuff.